Lucius Sicensis. It's from the northwest coast of America, running along a narrow band from Alaska down to California, known as the Fog Belt. So it likes areas with really high rainfall. In Britain, it likes many different soils, glaze, peats, deep freely drained soils, but they need to be moderately fertile. Because it likes this high rainfall, it's mainly found in the west and the north of Britain. This is our number one timber species. It makes over 25% of our forest cover. So this makes it the most important species to our forest industry in the UK. The main identification features of Sitka spruce include the bark, which is very plated and can fall apart quite easily. The needles are very sharp and this can actually be quite uncomfortable to hold. On the underside, the needles have these two white stomatal bands running up them and that's what gives it this glaucous look, this blue colour look. And they also sit on these pegs. The cones are relatively small and quite oval looking and the scales have these teeth at the end of them. Because of our very wet and mild climate conditions in the west of Britain, this species grows incredibly fast. It can be felled as young as 40 years old as a final timber crop, but typically 60 years old, which is when it reaches its maximum mean annual increment. It's mainly used in pulping processes to make paper, card or tissue, uh, but it can also be used to make guitars or violins. In North America, they used it to make fighter planes for the First and Second World War and that's because it's got this very high strength to low weight ratio. Spruce is an intermediate light demanding species which means it will naturally regenerate under itself but only in very open well thinned stands. Sitka spruce regenerates very easily and in huge numbers as well. Especially in stands where there's clear fell and you've got Sitka spruce surrounding that clear fell stand, it can repopulate that area incredibly fast. You can have over 5,000 stems per hectare just from naturally regenerated trees. As we move to continuous cover forestry, we can use this prolific regeneration of Sitka spruce to our advantage. However, the gaps need to be big enough to allow that light in for them to grow. Due to Britain being reliant on Sitka spruce as our main timber species, and the fact that it's mostly grown in single species, even age stands, it makes it incredibly vulnerable to pests and diseases. If a disease such as Phytophthora mora, which has led to the felling of tens of thousands of hectares of larch and the stop to that species being replanted hit Sitka spruce, then we could be looking at the mass felling of our number one timber species in Britain. There are threats to Sitka spruce in Britain, one being Ips topographus, otherwise known as eight tooth spruce bark beetle. It was found in Kent in 2018 and is subjected to eradication at the moment. The beetle attacks weakened or stressed trees and that then allows infection to come in from diseases such as blue stain fungus. The worry is, is that with climate change the numbers of the beetles could increase and they would then start attacking healthy trees. It is a significant threat to the whole timber industry of Britain. One of the reasons why we're changing our silvicultural methods and moving towards continuous cover forestry and a mixed species and mixed aged forest is to make them more resilient against pests and diseases and climate change instead of us putting all our eggs in one basket. <laughs> 